Hello everyone, welcome back to Huskers in Enemy Territory. Um, today I was going to talk about um, the Vikings cutting uh, Riley Reef. Uh, he was the offensive tackle for the Vikings for the past, I think, three or four years. Um, total uh, cap savings that the Vikings were, are going to save is around $11 million um, dollars total. Uh, I think that they, they're going to have like maybe a dead cap of uh, about $3.4 million. So that's going to kind of hurt a little bit. But um, overall, I'm not sure why um, we did it really. Because con uh, he was like one of the best um, offensive uh, linemen that the Vikings had this year. Um, I guess he had a PFF. Um, grade of about 71.4 um, I'm not sure where that ranks in terms of like offensive tackles um, or uh, left uh, offensive tackles but um, considering the fact that we only have really Brian O'Neill and um, Riley Reef, I was kind of surprised that we would go the route of um, cutting him um, I guess at least what I've read is that um, the total cap hit um, this year would have been at like seventeen million dollars a year or a year. I'm not sure um, if he was signed um, for the next year. I guess um, I'm not sure how long of, of a contract he had, but maybe uh, the Vikings were trying to lowball him again and um, get him down to maybe like the. I don't know, 12, 10 to $12 million a year, you know. Um, as of right now, um, the one head shaker for me is um, why we try and, or why we didn't really go and cut um, Shamar Stefan. Um, he was horrible uh, against the run. He's horrible against the, uh, you know, trying to, get any pressure for on the quarterback um he had about um, a 3.4 or 3.5 um cap hit this year uh, I, I believe there's no dead cap so i would have been trying to cut him before i would have cut um riley reef um you know obviously we don't know everything that's going on with um the cap situation and what um, uh, might have been for uh, uh, reasons why um, Riley Reef d didn't want to resign, but um, I don't know. Just seems like there's a lot of holes that the Vikings are going to try and uh, you know need to figure out um, for this team, and I'm not sure what um, they're going to do really. Um, in terms of uh, the draft and um, the free agency, you know. So it'll be uh, interesting to see what happens the, in the next few weeks. Um, we've had a few bomb, bombs, Woj bombs go off, you know, type of deal, you know. <laughs> and uh, I wonder if uh, we'll be seeing any more cuts um, up, you know, coming. Um, I expect uh maybe anthony barr would be next um possibly uh um colquitt uh he was the um punter for uh, the vikings and he didn't really do um too hot this year so he, he'd have to um uh figure that he might be uh next on the list of um players to be cut um eric wilson and um Ant Harris aren't being uh, um, franchise tagged. If uh, any of you guys uh, didn't see that, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, as of right now, it's kind of interesting um, seeing what's going on, really, because I don't, I don't really have a lot of faith in uh, uh, the Vikings right now in terms of like. Um, fielding a team that will be able to really even make the playoffs. Um, 
course, uh, you'll have to wait until the draft and I and see what happens in free agency. But I don't know, man. It's going to be a, a rough year, I think, for the Vikings. Um, so it is what it is, I guess. Um, you know, I guess uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, another uh, little tidbit. Um, apparently, uh, the Vikings picked up a fourth and a sixth round pick uh, for... Um, Losing um, Trey Waynes and um, Alexander. I can't remember his uh, first name for some reason, but um, yeah, we would have might. I think we might have had a little bit higher of a comp pick if uh, Trey Waynes would have uh, actually played last year. But since he got hurt, um, that kind of hurt our um, comp pick, uh, uh, whatever you want to call it, um, sweet stakes type of thing, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it turned into a fourth round pick instead of a third round pick, but eh, whatever, you know, as of late, it seems like our fourth round picks haven't been really panning out much, you know, Willie Beavers and a few other guys, you know, top of my head. I think the last guy that really panned out is, uh, Daniel Hunter. And he might have been a fifth round pick, but I'm not sure about that. I think, no, I think he was like a third or a fourth round pick. Um, but uh, besides that, uh, I think I'm going to um, keep this video a little short. Um, you know, just because it's just about one player or whatever. So uh, not much, not too entertaining, but uh, just something to keep the ball rolling. You know what I mean? So, uh, uh, don't forget to, uh, like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications, and as always, uh, go Big Red.